is Johnny Wrestling or Johnny Takeover, as my shirt says. And listen, I want you to listen. Like, we're involved right now. It's crazy. It's loud. It's hectic. We're in New York City. So I want you to listen to No Holds Barred Network. Hey guys, welcome back to the No Holds Barred Network with another episode of Under the Ropes. I'm your host as always, the EVP of Giggles, the heartbreak chick, the queen of the Indies, Tiffany. And I'm always joined by the law, Ray Ramundo. And then today's special guest is Dave Cole. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me. Oh, Tiff, come on. You Again, you, you give all your nicknames. You at least kind of got mine today. We got to give him the proper intro. I'm sorry, Mr. Cole. Just one sec. What's up, everyone? This is another episode of Under the Ropes. As she mentioned, I am the law mirror, Ray Ramundo, and we are live here with the psychedelic warrior himself, Dave Cole. How's it going, Dave? Thank you for that one. Both your intros were wonderful. Uh, <laughs> and it's going good. It's a, I'm, I'm feeling good today, so I always try to ride that out whenever I'm feeling that. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. Okay, so I see you're having uh, issues streaming. I don't know why. So we're just going to record this and upload this after. So why don't we just get Uh into this interview? So I'm so excited. Um, I've seen so much of your, uh, God, pops and and stuff on on the ring attire. I mean, I'm, I'm so excited. Like, I'm sure like a lot of people want to know so much about you. So I'm really excited for this interview. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited too. Uh, I don't get to talk too much about my art and stuff just in person and people see it and there's so much that goes into it and so much that like brought me to this point. So it's cool to kind of let people know where I came from and how I got involved in the business and everything. Yeah. So awesome. we're so excited. So, okay. So let's, let's jump into the first question. So how did you get into the wrestling business? So I, I grew up loving wrestling as most wrestling fans do. Um, and, uh, I started backyard wrestling with my cousins and we, we built a rinky dink kind of ring in the backyard. And this was when I was like 13 or 14. Um, and then we started taking backyard wrestling like really seriously. It was like uh, what we would do on Friday afternoons when other people were training for football or getting drunk. We would we would have backyard wrestling events, and and that really led us to meet people across the country who were also backyard wrestling. Um, like a, a lot of big names like Ricky Shane Page and Russ Myers, and uh, a lot of the guys from the Ohio area. I grew up like wrestling with these guys, backyard wrestling, and it, it's crazy to see how that's come full circle now. We backyarded, and then we all got trained, and now some of these guys are the top guys in the indies. So it's really cool to see how far that's developed and how much people have worked to get to this point. Awesome, awesome. It's great to hear. Definitely, a lot of guys that like me and Tiff watches recently. We saw them at. Like GCW, I see guys that are like definitely making a killing. And just from seeing, I've got to, luckily enough, I got to see the work you've done as well in the ring and what you've done out. And it's great, man, to see. Um, let's keep it going, though. Let's talk again. You talk about your artwork. Let's talk about that evolution of your artistic ability. Where'd your love for the art begin? I, I've, since I've grown as a person, I've, I grew up, uh, making art and entering art contests in elementary school and stuff. And, um, so that was kind of my, always been my path. It's always been art and performing. Um, so I went to, I got my degree in graphic design. I went to college and it 
throughout college, I started falling in love with painting again. And that's when I, I realized I had never painted wrestling before. I, I had always painted just weird, unique thoughts from my brain. Um, and then one day I was like, why don't I paint wrestling? Like, I love wrestling. Why don't I do that? Um, so I started just painting portraits and championship belts and stuff. And, uh, and at the time I was still in, in the wrestling. So I would kind of use that as my merch and show people that I had this other skill besides my in-ring work. Um, and I think a lot of people nowadays don't realize that I did wrestle for so long and I, I had a pretty good career. Um, and I got to wrestle a lot of amazing talent and travel and train with guys. And, uh, that's a side people don't really see because I don't really do that anymore. And uh, I just mentioned to my fiance yesterday that I, I miss wrestling so much in the ring, like so much. I have ideas. I have stacks of ideas. I, I've got new gear drawn up. I'm like, I'm ready to get back into it. But uh, COVID kind of threw a wrench in where my plans were this year. Mm. Yeah, it's been rough. I mean, oof. I mean, I'm glad that we're starting finally to get back into some wrestling. Like me and Ray were just talking about that before you joined us. So thank God we got some sort of wrestling to come back. So we're definitely excited to see. Uh, Have you been to any of those, the GCW, the ICW shows? I've been in the past i have a gcw i gone for the first time uh this year in january that was my first uh gcw show live i'm usually always at the icw shows i've been a little nervous to go to some stuff right now i mean me and ray had just gone to synergy uh last I'll week so and again like we're still like nervous with some you know still going to some of the shows so uh hopefully you know things will come back into full gear and then we can go to those shows as well yeah, it's, it's it's weird just even going to shows and being vocal and stuff and even watching like the New Japan shows like you could tell that at points the crowd wants to boo or they want to scream or chant a name but they they aren't and right. so like so those moments are like silent and it it's a really weird vibe um but I'm glad I, at some point people have to just uh try things out and it's not the safest time, but if people are being safe and people aren't spreading the disease, and people aren't being sick after the shows, then I think it's good to slowly work. Yeah, them, you know that's that's shortly but surely like it's going to become, I guess, what the new normal is for wrestling. Yeah. But it's at least if it brings some entertainment and some peace of mind, at least we're getting something. Yeah. Yeah. So. Definitely. That's so what we can expect. With all the apps and stuff like that that we get to use, that it, even if we can't be there, we can still witness all this, which is great. So, mm -hmm. uh, See, what's funny, though, is that we're kind of, like, not noting. We just got kind of an exclusive Dave Cole might return to the ring. How do we just let that pass? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait. <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't like speaking things into existence before I'm, like, really confident in myself and i have things set in stone um and i I've, I've mentioned it before to a couple promoters who i've kind of secretly been seeing if they'd book me and stuff and uh oh. and it's been a while and i it's been a couple of years since i've been in the ring like consistently and uh i i don't want to take anybody's spot that's been working really hard for the past couple of years and uh if i'm gonna jump back into working with the uh, I really want to work with GCW. A lot of the places I painted canvases for, I want to. I want to wrestle on those canvases. Um, but I want to. I, I want to earn my spot back. I want to climb my way back up. Um, I don't want to be handed anything. I want to prove that I could still go and go with these younger guys who are doing amazing things in the ring. Um, and I'm. I'm older now. My my style is going to be different. But I. I like that. I like being somebody who could like teach younger kids to slow down or teach them things that they may not learn until years down the line. Maybe I can impart that into their minds early on. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, Ooh. If, if people oh, want it's it. It's awesome um, to hear. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> um, all right. So let's talk a little bit about your artwork. What's been your favorite piece that you created? 
So I, I've got a couple, and um, they all kind of have their stories, and they're, they're good. Um, so I've got I've got three, and we'll start from chronologically. Um, so one of the first conventions I ever sold my art at it was a uh, in New England, a New England wrestling. I think it was the New, New England Wrestling Hall of Fame convention, um, and uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan was there. I knew he was going to be there, and this was past the point when he had lost his jaw and he, his wife was there speaking for him and everything. And that dude was there all day signing autographs, just like he was at uh, maybe two tables over from me. Um, and I had done a painting of a uh, Krang from the Ninja Turtles. Oh. with like, uh, with like a Bobby the Brain Heenan bow tie and a wig on. Um, so, and I wanted to get him to sign the whole show, but I, w- I was like nervous. It was my first time. I didn't want to like bother him. Um, and I remember the show was ending the convention and Drew, C- Drew Cordero from beyond wrestling, who I I've known and loved for many, many years now. Uh, he was like, dude, just ask him. Um, so as he was leaving, the car, I ran up to him and I was like, I'm, I'm sorry. This is like after the fact, but, um, I was wondering if he could sign this painting I did. And uh, so he mumbled something to his wife. And, and she's great at understanding what he wants to convey. And uh, she said that he he would sign it no problem, but, but only if I did for him to send to him. Um, so I, I did a second painting and sent it to him. Um, which was like really cool. It was the first time a kind of a legend of the business took the time out of his day to make me feel seen. Not gave me such confidence going forward and presenting my work. And it, it's hard as an artist. Like you, you work on out for hours and hours on a painting or something, and then you know you show it to the world and basically be judged. Um, so a lot of I've never been a self confident person too much overall it's always been an issue so the fact that he gave a huge moving forward with my art um so that's like that's always the first one that pops into my head and i i find and i don't keep a lot of stuff for myself so that was really cool that's awesome um, yeah and then uh i did a goldberg pop in kind of the same story i was next to him at a convention and he um, he saw the pop. He asked to take it home for his daughter, and then he uh, he offered that if I made like as many pops with him as I wanted and sent them to him, he would sign them so I could kind of resell them and make a little money. Um, and th- and that was so cool the fact that he was allowing me to use his likeness to make a little money because he knew I was like working so hard. And um, Goldberg, I will always have a soft spot for after that. And I, I always tell people that he's like a hero that you meet that went above and beyond. Um, and then my final one, I recently did the, uh, the New Japan uh, Ring of Honor canvas when they were at Magic Square Garden. And uh, that was something that like really helped show my skill to the rest of the world. It was like MSG is a place that I've seen countless concerts and wrestling shows so like that venue in particular like it's not it's a place i always wanted to wrestle so when i got hurt and my wrestling career kind of uh tapered off and slowed down the fact that i was able to still work in msg using my art was like one of the coolest things i've ever um experienced and it's going to be hard to top that with my art i don't know how I could top being in Madison Square Garden. I know, it's so cool. So that was like a, another huge moment. I So I hold those things kind of really close to my heart, these moments that I felt like I really pushed myself and worked hard and saw some uh, reward from that. 
So for if you guys are listening to this on audio, I have it up on video of the design for the G1 Supercard up on the screen. So I'll also post it on No Holds Barred Twitter as well if you want to take a look. So, but that's so cool. Like this is just some of the artwork that uh, that he has shared with us that we can uh, show you on screen. But again, I'll post all this stuff on the Twitter account as well, so you guys can see that. So, but how cool is that? The, the, I can't, I can't imagine the feeling. Uh, piece of art of mine that like you noticed i'm sorry do you recall like the first piece of art of mine that you, you noticed or I don't, um i don't know i think like in person i'm definitely gonna say my best friend brad um because he had the effie pop done by you so like physically <laughs> actually seeing it like it was probably like that i mean i was at the g1 supercard so okay. i did see that That's as tough. well so, but, like, the pop-wise, definitely, like, in person, Effie, and I'm still waiting for my Gangone pop, so I'm hoping, like, maybe today, maybe, like, after this interview, I'll go downstairs, it'll be outside of my door, hopefully. Um, but mm -hmm. I don't remember, like, the first, there's so many of, like, your creations, I can't pinpoint exactly where. Yeah, that's a tough question. I mean, yeah. one, uh, that, that was a good one, and I, that that's what kind of made me start doing more indie guys, too, um. Once I did that Effie one, I was like, oh, I could do the GCW crew. And, um, yeah, the I, I, want, I wanted to meet Effie really bad um, this Mania weekend. Yeah. Uh, and I, I had such big plans to really meet a lot of people and a lot of fans and wrestlers that I haven't met before. And uh, that, that that's so disappointing that that weekend didn't happen. But... Yeah, <laughs> I know. it's 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 hard, like... Uh, hopefully like hopefully next year but it's cool because yeah. effie got to hold your effie pop which was really cool because i was there with brad with all that so i thought that was so cool so now like i have to have gangone hold the gangone pop when it comes in <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love seeing that too just the fact that um some of these wrestlers can see my art and um I've got a great collector that I've become friends with, and she's uh, she's a big New Japan fan. And I've done uh, I've done I feel like almost a hundred pops for her. Oh uh, wow! And she's done like everybody in New Japan, and she's she's been fortunate enough to go to enough shows where she's um, given them as gifts to like Omega and Ibushi oh, wow. and uh, and Yo, and uh, a lot of them have like replied to me and been like, "Oh man, that's amazing!" and the fact that these guys are seeing it and they're taking it home and they like they might have them in their apartments right now as we speak uh that that's just very surreal to me um and it's a it's a cool part of this process i'm i'm glad i get to share my art with the people that inspire the art and i love seeing it like what actually like you said like with the wrestlers as well even like with sammy g when that like you had sent it over and then he had it on the blog i thought that was pretty awesome too so like to see like a genuine reaction of it is so cool like oh yeah. i think it's awesome I, yeah. <laughs> that's all I for my art i want uh i want to inspire people i want to bring a smile to people's faces like life's hard and uh i'm fortunate that i have i've worked on this skill enough that people see it and they appreciate it and i could draw emotion from people um and i feel like that's a a blessing so i want i want to use my art always to inspire people or to make people smile or make people fall in love whatever it may be like I, i've done pops for like a like wedding cake that wedding oh cool stuff like that like blows my mind like I, i'm part of these people's pictures like forever now um so like Moments like that, like really, just hit hit me in the heart. Oh, I love that. It's it's real. It's definitely like, yeah. It's again, wholesome. no matter what art is around us, like yeah. everything is an art. So it's amazing to be able to have those moments. Um, funny enough, one of the first times, like I feel like I did years ago as well, especially with all the times I've been around JT and stuff. But the first time I'm like getting to see like a pop of yours was with Great Muda last year. There, yep. I remember we brought a few of your pops for. Um, Cause we had Muda Tajiri and just uh, watching great Muda to look at the pop. And he's just like, he was so like astonished by it. Just seeing his reaction. I'm like, Oh, this is awesome. It's <laughs> just getting to see his reaction. And it's like, and this is the great Muda. And I'm like, 
I'm popping for motive. I'm like, <laughs> oh, he loves the art. Like, it's like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wild. Thank you for telling me that story. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, that's like it's just, it's so wild. The Muda, great Muda. Um, and I, I've done so much Muda artwork uh, over my years. He's such a just fantastic source of art and his his gear, his the moments he's created over the years. Yeah, that's a uh, that's cool that you got to have him. That's yeah. cool. Oof. It, was, it was insane. Oh, huh? let's keep it going though. We're telling we're telling great stories, but we still have a lot of questions. <laughs> um. I mentioned him a little bit right now, but can you tell us a little bit about your relationship with the pro wrestling savior, the juice, death by elbow himself, JT Dunn? Yeah. Um, JT, you know, we grew up, both grew up in New England wrestling in that whole scene. And um, I first met JT when he was like a rookie rook. And, uh, you know, he, he had his issues that uh he was working on just growing up being learning how to just deal with people and um not piss people off in the wrestling business um so i that's kind of how we met um he came to me looking for advice and just i i gave it to him and he took it and he learned from it and i i always appreciate that if you're gonna come to me with a, looking for advice please like listen to what i say um and jt did it and uh, i really appreciated that and we developed a friendship and a bond and um, just trained together and tossed ideas around. And we were in stables together on certain companies in New England. And uh, yeah, we just really got to know each other over the years. And we we don't talk as much as we used to. We've just kind of gone our separate ways, but JT grew into his own person too. So he, he, uh, he's had a great career and um, it's been awesome. Like seeing him just, be kind of a snot-nosed little kid to growing up in uh, <laughs> being part of like uh, the Juicy Product or uh, Death by Elbow and uh, seeing more PWG and just like it, it, I, I love JT. JT's uh, somebody who I've learned from, somebody who I've had some of my best matches with. He's a lot of seen on YouTube actually. Um, we we just click. We we work so well together. Um, yeah, JT's. Uh, I, w- I wish him the best. That's awesome. Oof, love it. Okay, so what's been the best like reaction that you got for a piece that you created? Ooh, There's got to be uh, one that like sticks out to you like the most. <laughs> you know what? I mean, it's got to be the the canvas again, the New Japan canvas. Just. Uh, because I, I was, like, on Cloud9 that show, and I was walking around MSG, and I, I would just stop random people, and I'd be like, yo, I, I painted that canvas. And they'd be like, oh, my God, like, <laughs> you, you painted that? And um, I, I actually met a, a really close friend that night, who I'm close friends with now, but he uh, he stopped to, like, take my picture and everything. He's like, oh, my God, like, uh, and it just made me feel so good about what I had done. And uh, just the reaction I got from that and the reaction I got from other companies that were like, wow, like that's really professional looking. Like I'd like you to work with us. And, um, yeah, that was a big one. Wow. Uh, other than like art I've done for my fiance for anniversary gifts where, she, you know, she maybe brought her to tears or stuff like that. But wrestling wise, uh, that one I think was my, my best reaction. Oof. It's, it's a huge one. That's awesome. Oof. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I, I know. I, I've I've got some big ideas for ring canvases to be used in like uh, even like vignettes for like wrestlers and stuff. I I have like really grand ideas that are out of my realm of like my budget. So I need to like work with people that have money that can like make these ideas happen. But, like, thinking of how to top that, I, I have. Like, like I did with that. And actually, I want to tell this story about that canvas real quick. I was really nervous to, like, even contact me about that. I just felt like I, like, who am I to try to work with them? So I, I put it off for, like, a couple of weeks. And then one morning I woke up, like, I jolted out of bed. It was, like, 6.30 in the morning. 
And I was like, you know what, screw it. Like, I'm, I'm going to write them an email and see, see what happens. So as I'm writing the email after, like, weeks of putting it off, and, it, and the fact that it was, like, early in the morning, too, adds to the story. But, like, as I'm writing the email, I get an email from Ring of Honor asking me about my interest in doing the canvas. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. That's crazy. Oh, of, like, especially after waiting, like, weeks to get the courage to send the email like as i'm writing it i got the email like that's like serendipity in the universe like working in ways that like i nobody can understand um, <laughs> wow yeah. see it's because it's because you're the psychedelic warrior so you just sent that you sent it out <laughs> and the vibe just got <laughs> that happens a lot in my life and my my fiance doesn't get that as much as i do but like I my wavelengths are in touch with other people like so strong sometimes that like and i don't understand it but i i follow it and i usually let that guide me and let me know like i'm on the right path like uh i like i i was supposed to send that email at that time right yeah how cool is that yeah if it's meant to be it's meant to be that's usually how it is um that's amazing just that just that little thank you for sharing that yeah that's that's so cool it's amazing to hear but again i guess it was meant to be, and again, we were both there to see that canvas, and uh, that show itself was amazing. Just that itself, it's like it's history. You got to be a part of history, right there. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, I want to leave my mark on the world as an artist, and I feel like the ring canvases kind of do that. Like people will be watching these events as long as they exist, and my art will be there far after I'm passed on or whatever happens. That's Aww. awesome. So let's go back a little bit. Like I mentioned earlier, the name, the Psychedelic Warrior. Uh, Can you tell us where that name came from? Yeah. Um, So throughout my wrestling career, I've I've wanted a unique character or name. Um, I started off just kind of like a cocky guy that danced around and I wore pink and uh, just uh, trying to find myself and like who I was, even as a person, not even as a performer. so, like, as the years went by, I, I had different stuff. A couple of years back, I was, I was trying to reinvent myself in Jack Wrestling. I was coming back from an injury that was, like, really bad. That really, still to this day, has kind of, like, made me slow down in wrestling. Um, but I was just trying to think of something different, trying to think of something other people didn't do. And in my, in my real life, I... I... I guess if you were going to label me, you'd call me like a, hip, a hippie. Um, I, I like the Grateful Dead. I like music festivals. I like, you know, that nature sort of thing. And uh, so I was just like thinking of the tie-dye and you love. Uh, he's always been an inspiration, Nick Foley. And uh, so it, the Psychedelic Warrior just kind of like popped into my head and I I wear my tie-dye poncho and I kind of act like I'm on mushrooms or LSD or something. Um, <laughs> but, but it's good because it adds to kind of like, I could kind of like flow through the match. My movements are kind of based off of just the vibe and the feeling. And um, it, it's, it helped set me apart and it kind of gave me a character for people to latch on to. And I do like the uh, this hand symbol and that's kind of been part of uh people latching on to my character and stuff too. So that's where the second of warrior came from. That's cool. Awesome. I like that. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so we have a fan tweet from our friend uh, Conrad at everything pro wrestling. He's got two questions. The first one is who is your current, uh, who's your current rival and who is your favorite wrestler to watch today? If I had to pick a current rival, it would be, uh, well, since I'm not really wrestling anymore, but, um, it would have to be Anthony Stone, and uh, he's a New England standout. He doesn't wrestle too much. He recently had a really bad injury. Um, thankfully, he recovered from. But uh, I just had a music video made by my favorite music video maker, this guy Puro Wave on YouTube. Um, amazing guy, and I, I wanted something to capture that feud because I wrestled uh, Anthony Stone like eleven times over the course of a year, like 2014, 2015. And uh, he became like my, my rival. Yeah, we always had a friend who was always based on 
athleticism and counter wrestling and uh but if I had to have a rival it would probably be him. But <laughs> since I have mentioned returning to the ring and my ideas on where I want to go with that. I want to wrestle a lot of the younger New England guys. And one guy right now, I'll call you out right now. Ooh. D.L. Hurst. Oh. D.L. is a guy that I, I've i watched grow and beyond. And uh, we have very, very similar styles. And I think we would match up very well. So not just D.L., but all you younger guys and beyond that are taking over right now. The veteran is here, oh. and I might have to teach all you young a lesson. <laughs> Wheeler Yuta, oh. Evan Blackwood. <laughs> all right, Ray, let's get the streamers ready. Let's, uh, you know, <laughs> we're going to go. We're going to make signs, you know. They're not probably going to be as oh, good as no. his art, but, you know. <laughs> I'll throw well, glitter. I don't know. We'll <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> I'm going to be watching all those guys uh, this weekend at... The Beyond and GCW yes. show. Yes, I'm so excited I for this weekend. There, but uh, I'll be watching for sure. It's a good. Uh, it's a good weekend of wrestling. Oh, look! Oh. <laughs> oh, there we go. Got the artwork already and there too. There you this go. This shirt in particular, uh, this design, I've been, I've been pushing this design for years, and this, I think this design is kind of what made people uh, connect with my art in a new way, and. Uh, people just started taking me a little more seriously once I put this out for some reason. And, uh, it's been, I just, uh, yeah, still releasing new versions of it. And, um, I know Rick Flair has seen the shirt. We kind of used it for, uh, like, for it and stuff. So that's cool. That's cool. I like yeah, it. I should have been prepared because I have the shirt. I should have worn it for the, you know, Ray, because I remember ordering it years. Oh, yeah. Ray. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> what, what, what was the other part of that question? There was a two-part. Uh, who is your favorite wrestler to watch today? Uh, um, let's see. First guy, first guy that pops in my head is Naito. Ooh, um, yes. And uh, he might not be my, might not be my fully favorite, but um, he's the first person that popped into my head. I just love his aura and the way he carries himself and. Um, what he's been doing this past year with his title feud and stuff. Um, but yeah, Naito, uh, I've been loving Dickinson lately. Yes. Uh, I, I've known Chris for a long time um, through Beyond. We both, both of um, originals in Beyond. And um, he's just one of the hardest workers I've ever met in my life. And he's he motivates me, even if he doesn't know it, to work out harder, to eat better. Um and he's he's a guy who's still having like just real hard hitting matches on the indies, and it's a style that is kind of fading a little bit. But he his match recently with uh, Kit Osborne like it was one of those matches where he was beating the crap out of Kit, but he did it in a way that made Kit look good and look powerful and look like an underdog and. Uh, that's that's really hard to do to make yourself look great, but also make the other guy look great at the same time. And uh, Dickinson's at that spot where he's just having consistently great matches. And uh, yeah, so Dickinson's one of my favorite U.S. guys to watch right now. Too bad that uh, table didn't break. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Multiple times. I think it was like four times. I was gonna say Kit seemed like he had fighting spirit, but I think that table had more. Because <laughs> the table did not want to. Oh, poor Kit. I uh, know. Did they break it that match? Huh? I, I I feel like they actually eventually broke it that match. Did I think uh, they did? I think that they did it like after the match, right? Right? I think that's what it was. Yeah, it was I after because the, the I think they, he put him through like, it. Okay, we're gonna break it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like four times. Like I think we counted. We kept laughing and we're like, okay, this this table's not going over. But I think that they tried like after the match, if I remember right. Oh, <laughs> that was good. Oh jeez. <laughs> okay, let's keep it going. So I don't want to sound cliche, but as an artist and as a wrestler, do you agree that wrestling itself is an art form as well? Yeah. And uh, that's something that I wish just the general public could see 
more right away. Like, even when I tell people nowadays that I'm involved, like, I, I tell people I'm an artist, and they're like, oh, like, what do you paint? And I'm like, well, I'm involved in, like, all things professional wrestling, and, like, it's always a process, process of, like, explaining to them, like, just what wrestling is these days, and, like, the that it's so much more than what they see on TV with WWE. Um, so yeah, that, um, that's always interesting to tell people about, but, uh, yeah, the, it, 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 it is an art. The fact that I was an in-ring wrestler and like, I understand so much goes into putting together a match that works and is presentable and has emotion and tells a story and, is safe like there there's just so much that goes into a match that people will never see and makes it hard for them to really understand or respect wrestling in the way that people that do know what goes into it um the level of respect they have for it so um yeah but yeah it's an art and art form in so many ways oh yeah no awesome yeah that's right because it's like I'm still a student in the game. I'm still training. I'm still doing everything. But just seeing how we have to break down matches, what goes into it, it's like it's something that it's a masterpiece in its own. How much goes into just a sometimes five, seven minute match. But it go it's so much more than what it looks like for the and normal that, eye. Like you might not even learn until years down the line, you know, it's like until you have those matches where you mess up in your sitting there like unsure of what to do in front of a crowd of a couple hundred people and you're like uh and and it's not until that moment that you're like embarrassed and confused that you're like next time you you're in that moment you'll do something different to, to cover it up you know it's a so it's a learning process i've been doing it 15 years i've worked for most major companies i've trained in i've done a lot and i still feel like i have only scratched the surface on like what it is to be a pro wrestler. Um, it's a lot. Even like as, as a fan, you don't really know. And even like me seeing a little bit like behind the scenes, I still don't even know. So and from what I see, it's crazy. <laughs> like, so I always tell people you really don't realize and, and someone like me definitely like appreciates that or like everything that you guys do. So thank you because you guys do a yeah. lot for us. So, and oof. It's much harder to do without you guys. So, uh, you know, having that crowd there, that's what makes wrestling so weird now. And uh, just having that crowd there is so important. Um, so the empty arena shows are they're just weird. I, I can't even really watch a lot of the empty arena stuff. But, um, yeah, it's the world we're in, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Hey, at least that's why, like, if I'm with a group of people or are watching – on the show so i try to take some video especially if it's for like some of our friends like i gotta take that video of us cheering uh yeah. for the wrestlers like we just did with chris bay when he won on impact this weekend we we're like woo, chris and then we like tagged him in the video <laughs> so at least you got a little bit of reaction from us that's, but that's a great idea actually i, I love that <laughs> why not we did it for uh leroy and ej when they were dark and we were like oh like we were all like we we're all on skype and like I took a video with my phone, and we're like, "Oh, we're cheering New York, yer!" <laughs> hey, we are important too. You guys like feed off of us, and we feed off of you guys. So give and take. So we got to make the best in the situation. <laughs> so I, I, I miss New York. I miss the East Coast. Uh, I, I love Colorado. I've been out here two years now, um, but like that East Coast energy, I miss. Uh, I miss the attitude. I miss. Uh, yeah, New York in general too. I used to I used to be there often, and uh, it's nothing like nothing like the city. Oh yeah, <laughs> I always say that. A lot of people want to leave New York, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, I can't see myself leaving New York. I'm too much of a city girl to like leave and to go somewhere else. It's kind of weird, but uh, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> so you supposed to have to live with wrestling too. Like out here in Colorado, there there's like nothing. And the and the, co and the companies that are out here are not at the level that East Coast companies are. Um, yeah, I hear that a lot. That I don't want to discourage any. There's a, a lot of great talent here in Colorado, but it's a uh, it, we were blessed on the East Coast and are blessed to have the quality of wrestling we do. Yeah, well, definitely. But it's cool Never. also to check out. 
<laughs> okay, so let's keep this moving. So is there a certain piece you would want to create but haven't gotten the chance or inspiration to begin it yet? Yeah, um, and it's kind of, I kind of beat myself up for it as an artist because I've had these bigger ideas, even for paintings, um, that I won't, I won't give away because I don't want anybody stealing my ideas. But uh, yeah, I have uh, some bigger projects that I think will show a, a side of me that people haven't seen with my art. Because um, a lot of my art is in the portraits and the pops. I can't, I can't show the full potential of my skills on smaller pieces like that. Um, like the pops, especially, I don't have a lot of room to be super creative. Um, and even the smaller paintings, but I've got some huge paintings I want to do. Um, my, I could give away some of my big idea, but um, I want to do like a, a gallery show, um, and like an art gallery, but I want to have like multiple wrestling rings set up and I want to do like huge scenes on, on the ring canvases of like famous uh, wrestling scenes, like Hulk slamming Andre or something, but have like, my painting of it on the ring canvas, like strapped down to the ring. Oh, cool. Ooh, that sounds so cool. Walk up the steps and go on the ring apron and kind of like see it in the ring. Um, it maybe have like matches going on or something, but, um, uh, yeah, things like that. And just the ring canvases in general, I've, um, I, I've sent out a couple of ideas to people videographers for um for like AEW and some other companies too but um nobody's really bit the bait yet but i have some ideas just where i can incorporate like my art on the canvas um in a way that makes sense to whatever story they're trying to tell um and that might not make sense without the uh, explaining it in full detail but i i do have great no, that's my, cool. My art. That that's cool. That sounds really, really cool. I'd be like, I would definitely go. I think that's really intriguing. So, yeah. no, don't give away too much. That's fine. Whatever you want yeah, to tell don't. us, yeah. like, you know, that's fine. So, very much respectable on that stuff. But even that alone, like, I'd like to come. <laughs> if it happens, let me know because I would love to come. <laughs> um, it's unique, it's different. I could. Uh, I think it would even not like non-wrestling fans would be interested in that they'd be like what, what the hell's going on and walk in and maybe become a fan hey you never know you you never you never know people could walk by and just the art of it alone might be really cool so yeah. um so we have a fan tweet from our friend brad my best friend brad he said can you talk us can you talk to us about the process of making your pops yeah um thank you brad <laughs> and uh brad's become a great collector and I, I always love talking and interacting with him yeah so I, um but yeah i uh so i used to do just the blank they were blank diy pops they um were just bald heads and stuff and i would sculpt stuff on them and uh that's actually how i got started with the pops some at uh beyond show i don't remember when but uh i i had been showing my art and people knew i was doing the art so somebody brought me a blank pop and they were like i yeah, just do what you want with it so I, I painted uh, El Generico. He was the first ever pop I ever made, um, and uh, it just kind of took off from there. So now, nowadays, like somebody comes out at me with an idea for a pop, I'll, I'll get as many pictures of that pop as I can, or, or that person, and then I'll find a head that works with like their hair or something I can sculpt or repaint to make it look like them. And same thing with the body. And then I got a, I boil the pops and I pop the heads off and I replant them back on the bodies. Oh wow! Um, and then I, I glue all that together and then that's when I start painting and I'll, I'll paint it for a couple of days until I, feel like it matches enough to the person. Um, and I always try to. Um, I used to do very kind of generic faces. They were all kind of looked the same. And lately I've been really trying to match like even like eyebrows or like just little distinct features on them to like really make them stand out. Like I want, I want my pops to be like little pieces of art. Right. Uh, they're not, not toys, but like something people can like turn and look at and be like, wow, like you put a lot of like 
small detail into this. Um, so I, I want to give people their money's worth. So I really try to go to that next level and making it accurate to the person I'm trying to create. Yeah, like the Chris Bay one that you did for Brad was like absolutely insane to me. I was, like, I can't wait to go to his house so I could physically see it because I remember like the FE one, like when I went to his house and he showed me. And then, uh, I mean, he was here this weekend, uh, Ray was here, and, and we were talking about all the pops. And I was like, oh, I say after Gangone, eventually, like, I want to do Alex Zane. Um, but even like the Gangone one, like you said to me, you were like, oh, I didn't even know that he had gold gear. And I just love that gear on him because you don't really see it too much. I don't see it too much that he wears it. But like when, when he does, like that's like my favorite gear on him. And it's like all the little details of like the sequence on it. So just from the picture alone, from what you sent me of how you did it, like I'm excited. Like I can't wait to put it like I have a little shelf of like just like special things that I've collected. Like I'm not a huge collector, so it's got to mean something for me to buy and put on the little shelf. So I can't wait to like put it with his mask next to it. So, uh, and so, so, you know, Alex Zane's going to be next on, on my list for pops. <laughs> I, I used to backyard with uh, the same guys as Alex Zane too. Oh. Uh, and he's such an incredible talent. Wow. I'm, I'm so glad he's kind of broken out and, yeah. uh, like kind of out of nowhere too. He, uh, that that one backyard show, he just that six thirty. Oh yes, for the moon with Tony Devin. Yes, yeah, uh, crazy, Definitely. great guy. Had him on the pod too. Amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing <laughs> people. <laughs> yeah. Tony's good people. They're all good. Oh, man. <laughs> Go ahead, Ray. Uh, let's keep let's keep it going. So, as you mentioned earlier, you have wrestled, you have done anything. Let's talk about if there was one person you could face again in a heartbeat. Who would it be? Face again? Yeah. yeah. Or, um, it would be Christopher Daniels. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. And I say that because at the time I wrestled Christopher Daniels, I was really, um, I was a champion out of this company in Ohio. And uh, he was the X Division champion at the time. And he wasn't really supposed to let people beat him outside of TNA, like, while he was the champion, like, they were really protecting him. Um, and for some reason, he, he let me get the win over him. And it was, like, a moment in my career was I got that confidence boost. Um, and I, that match, though, he he is so unbelievably good. I, I can't even begin to explain. Like, I, I, I thought I was a decent wrestler at that point, and then I wrestled him, and I was like, I, I am nothing. Like you are a god, uh, so you know. Ten years later, with ten years more experience in wrestling, um, I'd love to go back to that match, and uh, I'd feel way more confident in wrestling him. And I feel like I we'd have a much better match than we did ten years ago. It was it was a good match, but uh, I I wasn't. Okay, so put it on the list. Put it on the list. We want to see it. <laughs> There we go. It's like everyone usually has their their opponent list. That's just gonna be it. Christopher Daniels for Dave. Right. Take my money. Like, you know. <laughs> I want to wrestle. Uh, I'd love to wrestle Alex Shelley though too. Um, I've never wrestled him, but he was he's one of my big influences in wrestling when I was growing up and training. Um, and I've I've used a couple of his finishers as mine, and uh, just seeing his career resurgence right right now, and the fact that. He's been working younger guys too. Um, I kind of see myself in his position now, um, being able to teach younger guys some new, some old stuff. Wow, cool. Well, we'll see. We'll see. You never know what could happen. So, I, th- uh, th- this is put this is put it all out into the universe. Yep, yeah, it's so. in the clouds. Yeah, <laughs> you've had that luck though. That usually. It, it kind of works out. So. <laughs> it's in the clouds. If, if it happens, you heard it here, folks. You yes. It- <laughs> you, we got the exclusive <laughs> under the ropes. <laughs> okay. So we kind of like, I changed this question a little bit because I usually ask like uh, kind of similar to this question with wrestlers. But we're going to go with this with your artwork. So what's the craziest thing a fan's requested for you to create? Uh-huh. <laughs> No feet or something like that? Like feet pops or something? <laughs> I knew I was going to break Ray on that one. <laughs> I love to... his facial expressions. Like, that, just that. Like, there's something weird coming. <laughs> uh, 
nothing too too out there. Um, I I've gotten requests for like some pops for like serial killers and stuff. Oh like, wow! Uh, and and recently I got a Benoit um, a pop request and uh, so Benoit was like my hero growing up. I watched his DVD while I was training in Japan, like, over and over, um, just to, like, stay mentally sane and push myself. And, like, I met him once, and he signed a chair to me, and I said, hit him hard. And uh, I always thought that was interesting. Um, and Benoit was always a guy that, like, I admired. But, like, creating art for somebody who ended his career the way he did and ended his life the way he did, it just... It's hard to kind of know how I feel about that because I, I I admire what he did, but what he did in the end kind of can't rule all that out. So just a request like that, I think, are some of the weirder ones. It's actually, no, the weirdest one was somebody requested a Hitler pop. Um, and, and, um, okay. And they, were, they were like, I know it's weird, but like I I I'm not a supporter, but I w- I want the pop for some reason, and I. <laughs> I told him no. I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. Um, so, I, so that would probably be the weirdest action. Oh, wow. Yeah, I think that, that yeah, that, 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 that puts like, the cherry. Yeah. That puts the cherry. <laughs> yeah. Right, like, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. Man, well, I, then. Like I said, I thought it was going to be something funny about, like, like feet or something, because we know people that love feet. <laughs> I, I, I story like that. That was something like <laughs> Uh, Sorry. It's see, now funny. the problem is that we put that out in the air, so <laughs> next time we speak to Gabe, he's going to have so many, like, weird requests for feet. It's like... <laughs> and, I, need, I need to make some money. I, I just bought our first place, so uh, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do some feet painting. <laughs> if, oh, if you guys know somebody, send them my way. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> this speed clip. Anybody, like that you're friends with that is in defeat. All right, I got you. <laughs> well, we already broke Tiff, but I'm gonna continue here. I'm gonna try to. Sorry, Tiff. Throw you a little bit Why under the bus. Why are you throw me under the like bus? Because like you mentioned. <sighs> sorry, like you mentioned earlier, Dave has actually made you a pop for this man. You've faced this man a few times before. I want to hear your thoughts on the one above all, Anthony Gangone. <sighs> Anthony Gangone. Um, yeah, I, I've known him a couple of years now, and uh, we met at uh, a place up in Massachusetts, uh, RPW. Um, and we were both kind of, I felt like we were both kind of coming up at that point, um, and we had a match. And, uh, I mean, I don't really remember much about it. It was for a title that he ended up winning in this match. But uh, I just remember I wanted to do something to, like, just start the match hot. Um, cause the, I, if I remember correctly, like, the show felt kind of dull, and I was just like, what can we do to, like, get this crowd out of their seat? Um, so I was like, attack me during the entrance and just, like, DDT me onto this uh, table. And it was, like, a very sturdy table. It had, like, reinforcements and everything. I was like... There's no way it's going to break. I was like, it's just going to be like a thud. We'll both lay there on the table. It'll be a, a good opener. And then uh, you could work my neck the rest of the match because you damaged it early. Um, so he comes out and he jumps me and he puts me up on the table, gets me in the DP position, goes down with it. And like the table just breaks in half. And, like, my head like, pretty uh, and it, it ended up looking great. We ended up having to pay for the table. Uh, oh. <laughs> But it, it's a, it was a memorable moment. And, uh, <laughs> I need to find this match. Okay, Ray, I, you got homework. <laughs> I the promoter afterwards, and I was like, just take, like, 50 bucks on my paycheck or whatever. It was probably the whole paycheck, whatever. Um, <laughs> I, I, I hey, it was worth it for the moment. Make yeah. it moment. Make it moment. <laughs> but, but Ken a good dude and uh, somebody I respect, and he's, uh, yeah, definitely somebody who's earned my respect just through his words and his actions over the years of knowing him. <laughs> So awesome. He's awesome. He said a lot of great things about you as well. So uh, I need to see this match. Ray, homework. Find it for me. I feel like I watched it earlier because I, I was looking up like 
old clips and just to get some like inspiration what to ask i was it a four-way or was it just you it was um might have worked or it might it might even been a four-way yeah I'm a, all right, we're gonna we're gonna look for it, and then I'm we'll gonna, I'm gonna, we'll I'm gonna put it, it in the description for you guys, so you guys can watch it as well. So, um, so we have another fan tweet from Jonathan. He says, "What are some of your favorite pops that you have made?" Um, that's a good question too, because I've had um a lot I've done over the years, and um, they, a lot of them blend together, and I forget certain ones, but certain ones do stand out. And uh, I did a I used to, when Finn Balor first came back, he, I, I was like a huge Finn Mark. And uh, I had met him on a, when we were wrestling on a show years and years before that. Um, and uh, so when he came to NXT, I sent him a message. And I was like, I don't remember me, but we worked on the show a while ago. Um, and uh, I became pretty close with Finn. And uh, he was really great. And he was really great at retweeting my art I made of him and stuff. Um so I did a lot of Finn Balor pops early on, and I, I did them with like tentacles and like really weird demon stuff. Um, so some of my Finn ones are my favorites, um, and I did a three faces of Foley one. I've seen I had, that. Like, yes. Uh, the, you know, I had his cactus jack head in the middle, and then on both sides I had a mankind and a dude love head, and it was like three heads on one body, um, and that one came out really good because it was unique and it was different. And uh, Foley's actually been a, another supporter of my art, and um, we've messaged back and forth a couple times just uh, um, sharing art. And he, um, I did a painting of his three faces of Foley that he uses as his Facebook uh, profile picture right now. Um, so if anybody goes to his Facebook, you'll see one of my paintings. Um, so yeah, cool. the Foley pop... And I've done a, I've done some Onitas that, um, that I think are really cool with the barbed wire baseball bats and uh, but yeah I think the uh, three faces of Foley I think the single one is my favorite. That's cool. Um, what's the most requested art piece that you get asked to create? Uh, Kenny Omega pops easily. I'm well, sure. and and that's that that comes with an asterisk that um, the collector who is in Japan and who has given these pops to Kenny before. Um, she's, she's had me through every Kenny Omega that there's been from his early DDT green gear to uh, purple suit that he wore one time. Like I've done every version of Kenny. So I think that's kind of where the most Kenny requests come from. Um, but I've done a lot of Finn Balor's too. Kenny and Finn, I think are my top. That's top pretty one. cool. That's cool. Oh, man. Wow. Like, just admiring now, like, oh, God, the amount of art. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's cool. Like, I mean, even to go through his, like, Instagram page and, like, see it. I know, like, our friend April, she saw the, the Kenny Omega one in the, the Aladdin outfit. And she was like, this is so cute. So. And I like that. I like, uh, you know, because I don't know if New Japan or even AEW will ever have, like, a consistent series of pops and stuff so the fact that i could make pops for lesser known talent um and and see them like get excited like oh man somebody's like cares enough about me to create a piece of art you know like that always makes me feel good um yeah and it definitely i'll say this like this is not just to like toot your horn but you definitely go into so much detail yeah. that it looks a lot better than just even licensed pops yeah so, like, like i'll say that yeah looking at even the one you did for Tiff of Ant, like, it's very detailed. Yeah. It's the smaller things that maybe not everyone's noticing, but you right. definitely put that effort in, and it looks amazing. <laughs> it's like the uh, Tony uh, Depp one in the Daisy Dukes had me dying. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, I try. You know, like, I wake up every day, and I think about making art. Like, that's that's my life. Like, yeah. it's my, it's what I'm passionate about. It's... Um, for two years now, I've been doing art full time. I quit my job of like 15 years just to make art. Like, I, I have confidence in myself. I want, I still want so much more for my art. Um, I think I can really help even wrestling companies brand themselves or even just 
with my ring canvas ideas, I think I can add something unique to the companies that hasn't been seen before in wrestling. Right. Um, so it's just a matter of like getting the right people to see my art and showing that I'm consistent with my skill. So like that that's I, I appreciate you saying that about the details. Like I really do try to put in like the extra effort to make it not just another piece of art, but something like that people are like, oh, like I didn't notice that, or like wow, like you really went above and beyond to to make this good for me or the to make the company look good. Um, so there's pressure that comes with that, but I, um, art, art is my life, and yeah, uh, the de- uh, attention to details is something yeah. I'm very proud of. It shows. It definitely, it definitely yeah. shows. So, so exciting. Definitely. Thanks. So, unfortunately, we're starting to come down to the end. So, I'm gonna ask my final question here. So, for you in art in wrestling, what's the end goal? What do you want the legacy of Dave Cole to be? I want to be known as somebody who helped the community, who helped the business, who put in the effort in a uh, very positive way. I want to, especially with the way the wrestling world is now and the the negatives that have been very abundant over these past couple months, um, that that's so far from how I live my life and how I treat other people. And the fact that scumbags have kind of like tarnished what we all love, it really pisses me off. And uh, moving forward, I want to, even if it's being a trainer or a, somebody backstage at shows, I, I want to make a better culture for wrestling. Like, the, that's so important to me. The fact that it's been tarnished this bad, is, it's terrible, and it's uh, it's turned people off in wrestling, and we, I want to be a part of, like, making wrestling seem positive again, and uplifting, and, uh, yeah, all the positive, all the reasons we love wrestling. Like, I want those to shine way more than the shitty people that have given it a bad name. Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, so hard fun. time, so... Well, hopefully all the good, right? We stay positive. That's all, that's all we can do around here and hope all the good comes with it. So we're going to finish off with this one final question. To all inspiring and amateur artists out there, what's a piece of advice that you would tell them? Don't stop. Just uh, think of that story of mine, the New Japan email. Like that, that I've kept that in my mind as like a, a motivator in so many moments when I'm feeling doubt or when I'm feeling like I'm not good enough, like the worst that's going to happen is somebody's going to tell you, oh, you're, you're not good enough. Like maybe work a little harder and then you work harder and then you send them another email and they're like, oh shit, you've been working hard. We'll give you a shot. Um, so that, that's a part of it. Art is, it's a, it's a journey. Like, um, there's, there's goals and destinations along the way, but it's a, just like being a wrestler, it's, you're learning constantly. Like if you're not learning, if you've ever, if you ever feel like, you know, everything, then you're going to be stuck and you're not going to grow. Um, so yeah, just always keep them, keep confidence, try and, uh, don't be afraid to like put yourself out there. Great. Great advice. I'm going to f- like, yeah, definitely take notes people. Take yeah. Notes and I'm going to, f- I'm going to flash <laughs> his artwork again for you guys. So you can see like, it's so amazing like can't put Thank everything you. but please like tell everybody where they can follow you so that i mean i have everything in the description below but please tell everybody like where they could follow you so they could see all your your gorgeous artwork and everything else um my website is dave and uh that that's where you can find my t-shirts and my prints and pins and my merchandise that helps support me and helps make me create new art and uh on twitter and instagram it's davy painting um and that's a uh, easy one to remember and uh you can follow my daily art there and um yeah those are those are the main spots and then you can see my some of my previous matches on beyond wrestling's youtube channel um a lot of my stuff is up on there and independent wrestling 
is a a lot of my old Beyond Wrestling matches too. So if you want to see some old matches and see some art, those are the places you could see that. There you go. Awesome. Awesome. Amazing. So exciting. I'm so excited to see what else you're going to make. I can't wait to get my pop. I can't wait for future pops. And I can't wait to meet you in person one day. Hopefully everything will get back to normal. And then maybe I'll get to see you. Yep. Maybe, maybe you'll come back to the ring. Maybe you'll face Gangone or, you know, so I can come and <laughs> be their front row <laughs> with streamers. See, I don't want to be, I don't want to be cocky, but also if he's talking about coming well, back to the ring. Well, this is true. Mm-hmm. As someone training... I do want to say I do want to maybe put my name in that list. Yeah. <laughs> like as someone that got to watch you when I was younger, like, hmm, like we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. It's challenge accepted. So. Oh, okay. I'll be there. I'll bring med kits just in case. Like if anybody goes through tables or not yeah. go through a table, if it doesn't break, I got the med uh. kits covered. <laughs> anyway, uh, there goes our payday. <laughs> bring some extra cash just in case like you know if you go through a table or two or whatever so but anyway thank you guys for listening to another episode of under the ropes um your host is always the evp of giggles the heartbreak chick the queen of the indies tiffany that's the law ray ramundo and thank you so much dave cole i appreciate you and looking forward to keeping tabs with you in the future so (laughs) all right guys have a good one we'll talk to you soon Something